kids, kids. I, I thought I had to go uh, take care of something, but somebody called me and said, we can't do it until t t tomorrow. So let me finish up the uh, prejudice stuff. Uh, the second first, the first third grade, it was a nun. Could be anybody dressed in any any outfit. I don't care if it's a nun, a priest, a preacher, uh, whatever you got. I don't care what you're dressed as. People can be negative or positive. And that's going to be what you learn and what you can discern. That's all. I'm not going to judge anybody. We know about that. Mandel. <laughs> Those three Caligula rules. <laughs> the more you know the less you judge. It seems to be, seems to be factual. So we got the nun saying, she said, I don't know if she knew my, well, she, she knew I was Italian, I guess, by my last name. <laughs> Not even feeling to pronounce it, let alone spell it. That's pretty cool. Um, in my sense, it is for me. She says, and she was looking at me the whole, pretty much, I don't know why she was looking at me. Maybe because it was an Italian thing she was bringing up. It was history. It was a history. She says, 19, 19. It was 9, 8. 8 something to 9 something. All I remember is 8, eight something to 9 something. And then she says, it was 75 years. The Moors. And she's looking at me. The Moors came in, took over Sicily. And I, I said, okay, well, what are you looking at me for? And then the little blonde Viking chick. I'm only saying Viking chicks because she had two pigtails. The first one in kindergarten had one. She had pink ribbon. This this Viking chick had two pigtails with blue blue ribbon. I don't know why I remember that. And sister, sister, what's a moor? And, and and sister said, uh, they're black Muslims. I, I believe today, kids, they're not necessarily black. They could be brown, yellow, red. <laughs> the, the five colors. I was thinking of that a blue and green. I don't want to fall into that trap. So any anybody, well, the blue and green, I don't know. They, they could be hiding still, right? So the five colors we're working with, they could be Muslim, all right? I don't want to be prejudiced here. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get that across. Maybe, maybe not. I think somebody's going to still say I am. <laughs> I don't know who would do that, but <laughs> uh, we'll see. We got the nun screaming, Moors, Moors. I'm thinking, that's the in and out. I mean, because you can remember facial things with faces and veins. Expressions of people's faces. You notice and remember, I have photographic memory on faces. I can, I'm clueless, clueless on names. I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm really working on the names, especially actors. You know, I know, I know all the movies, but I can't remember their names. Hmm, okay. We're done with that. Thank you. Now I can go to my third third prejudice situation. It was with Grandpa. He got up the three flights of stairs. <laughs> he, he, Grandpa, what's the matter? You can't breathe. <laughs> and then he lit up another cigarette. I said, Grandpa, maybe you should stop smoking. Nah, I've been smoking since I was nine. Wow, Grandpa. I'm ten. And I haven't had it. Well, I had that one cigarette. And I don't want to go there. It was too negative. Dad said it was okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, I guess I might hit it someday. It was in kindergarten. So, smoking is important that we cover one day, but not right now. I got Grandpa not breathing, sitting down on the couch. He played this game, nickel, find a nickel, put it in the, under the rug. We're supposed to sit on the couch, not peek, close your eyes. Well, of course we peeked. It's a nickel. So, we, we always found it on the third time, never the first time. It was, then we were cheating. So we got the nickel, happy days. Nickel was big money back then. You could buy 10 candies, two for one. By the way, when you have a bag of candy, kids, I got, uh, you got to brush your teeth. I can't impress that upon you enough. I, I don't think I can. Maybe I can. If you look at Uncle Martin, how young he is, he could have brushed more, right? <laughs> yes, I could have. Grandpa's sitting there, we're playing, we're playing trouble, trouble, the bubble. And you need a six to get out. Well, well Grandpa kept, <laughs> had a hard time getting out to go around and get back home. So, so it was like one of the times 
We're, bro and I are pushing six and we're getting now. We're all almost going home. Finally, grandpa gets out and we kept landing on him. He kept going back home. So finally I said, I was getting pretty good at it because I was saying, come on, lady luck. And I think I said it maybe two times. And then the third time, come on, lady luck. And grandpa says, I never, ever want to hear you say lady luck. And I said, grandpa, we're winning. <laughs> he says, no, you're not. Lady luck gives gives takes takes lady luck takes more than she gives i don't ever want to hear you say lady luck again i said grandpa uh, he says if you're going to say you want help you say bona fortuna bona fortuna he said like three bona fortuna and i said tuna fish no not tuna fish bona fortuna what's tuna? it means good fortune good fortune Good fortune stays with you all her whole life. Lady Luck gives a little, takes a lot. I said, wow, okay. Bona fortuna, bona fortuna. Good fortune. I like, I like that. I, today I like that, bona fortuna. Hey, think about it. You're going to Vegas, right? You're a winner. I'm a winner. Yeah, yeah, I'm a winner. How many people leave? Vegas is a winner. They're apparently, they're, Lady Luck, give me Lady Luck. And, and, and then they end up winning, but they lose. They lose everything. See, they should be, Bona Fortuna. That's what they should be screaming for. I just want to throw it out there. Anybody goes to Vegas. <laughs> so the next thing was, Grandpa's writing a letter, and, he, and he's having a problem spelling. And I said, Grandpa, what's the problem? He asked, what, here? How do you spell here? I said, here? Well, which one? He says, here, here, here. <laughs> here. I said, well, it's H-E-R-E, -E, Grandpa. What's the matter? He says, well, I, I, I write how it sounds. I write what, what, how it sounds. I said, well, okay. I, I, okay. Why can't you spell that good, Grandpa? Because I, I only went to fourth grade. Fourth grade, Grandpa. I'm in fourth grade. It was my first fourth grade. I thought it was going to be my only first fourth grade. Well, little did we know, I went to three more. Um, so I said, Grandpa, I'm in fourth grade. He says, Yeah, I know. I think he was, he was kind of upset that maybe I'd get to another one. Ah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so I said, Okay, okay. And then we finished the letter. And then I said, You know how kids are. You know how kids are. You say. Mom, Dad, well, you know, you know, Mom, it, I knew Mom was a uh, kind of mixture. Nanny was all German. Then Gramps, he was, he was English, French, English, French, ah, Sweden, ah, Vikings. So I have some Viking blood in me. And then I knew Dad, all Italian on his family. So I, I, I knew that, but I said, Grandpa, where you come from? He says, well, it's not too important. Uh, you, I said, well, what happens if I ask somebody who, Italian where I'm from? And he says, you, you tell them, you tell them you're where from, your grandmother's from. I said, where's Grandma from? Napoli, Napoli. Can you say Napoli? Yeah, Napoli, Napoli. He says, don't forget it. I said, Grandpa, where are you from? He says, it's not important. I kept going. I wasn't going to stop until I found out where Grandpa was from. And finally, I said, Grandpa, where are you from? He says, okay, all right, I'll tell you. But never tell anybody. You tell them you're from Napoli. I said, okay, I promise. Uh, I'm kind of breaking my promise now. But he says, Sicily. We're from Sicily. I said, Sicily? What's, what's the problem with Sicily? I said, from my heart, I asked, Grandpa, what's the matter with Sicily? I mean, and he says, the Moors! The Moors! Well, I already heard about the Moors. So me being quick-witted as it seemed like I started early on, I, I said, Grandpa, and I had a long sleeve shirt on. I had a long sleeve shirt on and I said, but Grandpa, that's how we get such a great tan! And I was sitting right next to him and he stands up, he's like, taking off his black belt. I said, no, Grandpa, I'm only kidding. And I was on the other side of the room. Then he saw that I was kidding. I wasn't kidding. I was serious. And, and he sits back down, buckles up his, his pants. But then I saw, there's twice now I'm, I'm, I'm hearing about 
Moors, black, whatever. I'm thinking, man, this is, there's something going on with this white and black thing, isn't there? I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm putting it together, St. Martin and the Moors uh, from Sister on the first, third grade. And then I got Grandpa screaming Moors in my face, Moors. And it wasn't Schmores. Schmores is a graham cracker with stuff in the middle. So I, I just was, I was, I was given that at my first fourth grade. And I just wanted to get that out of the way. Kids, when's the first time you ate prejudice? And when you were get fed prejudice, did you eat it? No, I, I never ate it from the, from my first grade. And I haven't eaten it yet. And I'm not going to eat prejudice. Anybody wants to know. So I'm, I'm just trying to put that out there. <laughs> I know somebody's going to Uncle Martin's prejudice. And in fact, you know what? I bet you dollar to donuts, one of dad's favorite sayings other than don't run around with your, don't run around like a chicken with your head cut off. I, I found out from Aunt Nancy. I said, why did, Aunt Nancy, why did dad always say that? And she says, he was four years old. We lived on a chicken farm. I said, yeah, I know. She says, but he was introduced to it too early. He was four. Uh, he saw the chicken run around with no head. You know, it's going to bound to happen in, on a chicken farm, but it was a little too early for four years old. The second thing she told me, Dad didn't tell me, but the, the, the Italians like to have a uh, pig, pork, and they had, uh, I guess they slaughtered it themselves, and they cut the head off, and, and that's what they do. They put it on a big, they, they cook it in the oven, and... And Dad, Aunt Nancy says, Dad was run, at four years old running around, I smell pork, I smell pork, pork chops, whatever he's thinking in, I guess, in his mind. And, 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 and they said, oh yeah, we got something for you. <laughs> Sit down. So, so Dad's sitting down, at the, and he says, he's sitting down at the table, can't wait for, for the pork. <laughs> Grandma pulls out this big head with an apple puts it on the table right in front of my dad, and he starts screaming. <laughs> That's not funny. But she thought it was funny. So that was another way you could scare someone. Get a little kid and, and put a big pig's head with an apple in his mouth. I guess it was a scaring game. It's hard to get away with if that's what you're brought up with, kids. It, it doesn't stop. People still to this day, they make scary movies. They try to, to, try to scare people. I never liked being scared. Uh, even when I was four, the first mo scary movie, now, it was 1958, I thought it was 59, but it was 50, I was four, I was up in Flagstaff, the drive-in in Flagstaff, and we saw House, the house that bled, I remember that because somebody was walking under a banister and the house was, it was bleeding on their hands, I said, ooh, that's, that's scary. And then I don't remember much on the house that bled other than somebody was stuck inside a closet or something. And the girl and guy that was in there, there was some big head that popped up. That got me going. I closed my eyes the rest of the time, so I don't remember the rest of it. Now, I thought the second feature would be a little better. But lo and behold, guess what that was? The blob. Well, you, all you kids probably saw the blob. There's a big red ball thing that keeps getting bigger when it eats people. That scared me too. And I'm saying, what's the matter with you, kid? Well, I was four. Well, later on, I've watched it, you know, the blob. And, and uh, actually, I was wondering about that guy that acted. He was, he played in Bullet. Uh, yeah, I can see his face. The, the lead guy. And I was, later on, I saw, this kid looks a little older than a high school kid. His girlfriend Later on, I didn't know then. Later on, I see it's, it's Miss Crump. Miss Crump, whatever her name is. You know, Andy. Andy and Mayberry. You know, Andy, Barney, Opie. Opie's, Opie's a pretty positive actor, as I recall. And he's a fine director. So, Opie, uh, yeah, he's about my age, I guess. I guess that's why I like Andy, Andy Mayberry. Andy Mayberry. Well, it has some good morals to it, kids. Come on, think about it. When Opie hit that bird, killed it. I think that's when Dad came up with that rule. Well, remember how bad Opie felt killing that bird? What happened there? It came out positive. But Dad, I think that is when he came up with the rule. You kill 
you kill anything, <laughs> you're going to eat it. Well, he says, if you, if I ever see or hear of you killing something and you don't eat it, it's going to be the worst black meal you ever had. I said, Dad, don't worry. I will never kill anything. Well, I kind of broke this. We were up in years later. I was still a kid. Oh, whatever. Yeah. I was high school. I was, no. Yeah. I was, I I. I was with the Felixes. It was a family Aunt Nancy knew. And the Felixes had two kids our age. We're up in the cabin that they owned. And, and there was a little chipmunk. And I was the best throwing rock or mud clod guy in the world. I Anything I aimed at, I could hit. So the, everybody's screaming, Hey, the chipmunk! Chipmunk! Let's get the chipmunk! So everybody picked up a rock. And they were all throwing and throwing. I held, my, I held back. So the chipmunk is getting up the ponderosa pine. And it was got uh, about a foot, about my eye level. I took my rock and I, whew, he falls down. I go over there. I'm thinking, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up, little chipmunk. He's dead. I killed a chipmunk. I guess I'm kind of happy that dad didn't find out. Well, he did find out we buried it. But um, he, he saw how, how sad I was and he didn't give me the black belt. He, he knew that I wasn't going to kill anything anymore unless it was bigger, I guess, and I could eat it. But... I felt so bad about killing that chipmunk. I, looking at his little fur, his, I mean, I never was that close to a chipmunk, but this poor little guy, I felt a heart. A heart hurt me. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. So I never did that. Didn't eat it. We buried it. I guess that's, that's pretty much the story on prejudice and killing things. You eat it. I guess all we got now is is back to the kids waiting for me. Except it's the stupid story I saw when I opened up the doors. Mom had said, we start early. I was at four again. And I said, Mom, you kids know what I'm talking about, you little ones. All the bigger ones probably already know the story of what you've asked. M Mom, how did you and Dad meet? And there you go. Mom said, well, it was really romantic. As a matter of fact, it was love at first sight. And I said, really, Mom? And parents, remember, whenever you say love at first sight, you better have the whole story together. I guess Mom mom remembered the story, but it was kind of short and everything. But there was, I felt there was things being missing. So we kept going and going and going. She kept getting better and better and remembering, I suppose. Or maybe she was just keeping things out until we got older. And that's what I'm saying. Two years look for Two years later, I was six. <laughs> See the numbers. I was six, and I never, ever, ever asked that question again. How did you and Dad meet? Dad would always tell the story. Never got, never got interesting. Mom always had some more information. Dad stayed with the, he didn't go any further. And I can see why now. But Mom went, this is what it went. Dad, I knew where Dad's, all your, all your father's classes were. I knew... I knew what time it would burst open the doors, walk down the steps, walk down the brick aisleway, get to the wrought iron, the doors opened up. He would always go right, he'd go to the yellow bus, and he'd take off. She says, this time it's not going to happen, she says, I'm going to say hello. So she gets around the corner to the right, dad comes around the corner, and she says, hello, and dad goes, hello, she says, it was love at first sight. All right, so they're standing there chit-chatting, chit-chatting. I guess they chit-chatted too much. Dad missed the yellow bus. So he says, ah, don't worry about it, he says. I, can I carry your books home? She says, absolutely. He says, it was a gentleman. Dad was a gentleman. So they walk all the way home. It was a pretty good distance from that high school. They get there home. They, they meet everybody. Nanny, Gramps, Uncle Louie, and Uncle Bo. All four of them, the story goes, is, they all loved him. Hindsight is, I should have asked. I didn't have the... When your parents are around kids and they're still breathing, ask them the question that I wanted to ask. Mom, did you bring home bikers or something? Did you come home with people that they didn't like? Hindsight, later on you think about it. But everybody liked him. So now the chit-chat went on too long and Dad says, Hey, I got to go. I got to get back to Pluckman. And Grant says, well, that's like six, seven miles away. Why don't you hop in a truck? We'll give you a ride home. So they go down 206. They had to make a U-turn. Give you a scenario. They stopped off the freeway, and there was a long driveway, 
It's a five acre chicken farm. Long driveway. Off to the right is the house, the garage, then <laughs> grandpa's a barber. That's right, big barber pole out front with a blue ball on top. And at the at, next to the garage to the left was, was a barber shop. One seated barber shop. There you go. This is great. I, I wasn't thinking about that. So this is the deal. They're all sitting there. Dad's in shotgun. Mom's in the middle. Gramps is here. Now they see Grandpa coming up pretty briskly. And, and <laughs> it's not funny, all right? But when I heard the story, I laughed. Grandpa is Italian, and he's bow-legged, and he's, he's take. well, Mom says he's taking off a, well, she didn't say that yet. She, she says he's briskly walking up the, the driveway. And, and, and Graham says, hey, we're going to get to meet your dad. And, and my dad says, no, no, this is not a good time. So he gets out of the truck. Well, Gramps and, and mom were wondering, why is grandpa briskly walking up the driveway and he's taking off the black belt? And by the way, mom says, that black belt is bigger than the, the black belt your dad had. I said, mom, dad has a pretty big black belt. She says it was bigger. I didn't believe that either, but it, it was. It was true. Dad gets the grandpa's already uh, half, more than halfway up. Dad's coming down in the black belt, and mom says, "Your dad was getting whipped on the head, on the back, and the back, da da." And Gramps says, "I don't think it is a good time." So they went home. Just telling you, I never believed that story because I said. Mom, I don't think so. You're embellishing here. Grandpa would never hit Dad like that. She says he did. You got to trust me. I did. I didn't trust her. I never trusted her on that on that part of the story. She never. I never asked again about that story, by the way. And what I want to say is she was totally true. I didn't want to jump around, but it's kind of part of the story. I was in uh, eighth grade. I was trying to help Mom with the the bills because. It was, it was, we were struggling, I guess. So I was a paper boy. I find out from Norm, I was the ace paper boy. And, and uh, well, that's what he told me. He says, I got a lot of paper boys, but you're the ace paper boy. I said, really, the ace paper boy? That is, that's pretty positive. So that, that's what happened. I was, I was, I won. I won all the prizes, the big sheet of what the prizes are. You had to call. And then you see the number, you get the number. Ah, I said, I won all the grand prizes. So Norm was on the phone a lot of times and he was saying, later on, he says, you know, I think you were taking those names off gravestones. But I guess you didn't because you came up with the, the names, and that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't have got the prizes unless I, I went out and got the names. So I had to go s s get more people. And I already had like 150 dailies and 250 Sundays. Uh, I didn't have all those numbers yet, but I, 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 I had enough for... Well, see, that's what I'm saying. I was knocking on the doors, a lot of apartments all together. It wasn't too tough. So I got, I, everybody's opened their doors. Anyway, would you like to buy a paper? It's kind of cute. And I, I, I got a lot of sales. And then I got to one, oh, the Star Ledger. I don't know if they're still around, but it was back in Jersey. And um, I get to this one door and the lady opens up and she says, <laughs> I know you. I said, I don't think so. She says, oh, I know you. I I taught your father in sixth grade. I said, really? You want to buy a paper? She says, absolutely. <laughs> that was another sale. And I said, really? Uh, you, you taught my dad? And she says, yes, I did. He was my favorite student. I said, really? The favorite student? I said, boy, dad, dad was. That's pretty cool. I have a favorite student. She says, he invited me to a birthday, his birthday party. And then she stopped. She, she's, she's like, oh my, why did I say that? And I said, you you were invited to dad's birthday party in Pluckman? She says, yes, I didn't want to tell you the story. I said, well, no, you got to tell me the story. What's, what's the story? I love stories. I like I like true stories. She says, well, I I went down the I went down the long driveway. I said, yeah, and there was a circle off to the side where you can park all your cars. I think chicken park. There was plenty of room to park. And Grandpa was, by the way, Grandpa was a barber, so he 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 he, he did say he he cut women's or men's hair. He made specific about that. I said, I don't know. So so when she's saying, when my grandfather came out, uh, she says, I know that your grandfather had no intention of cutting my hair. <laughs> 
and, and she had this birthday present. And my grandfather wants to know what she's doing there on the property. And she says, well, I got this birthday present. And she says, I, your son told me there's a birthday party, so I brought this birthday present. He says, there's no birthday party here. And there wasn't. And that's what I'm saying, hindsight, hindsight. Dad, why did you tell this teacher to come to your birthday party? Oh, man, I wish I could have that answer. So, so she says, your grandfather really got mad. He got, got he was mad. So I gave the birthday present. I said, well, I guess I'll go. So she, before she, maybe she was getting in the car leaving or something. She saw through the room. She says, I saw your grandfather take off a black belt and he was getting, your dad was getting beat like <laughs> I've never seen before. And I said, oh my God, mom was telling the truth. So then I realized that grandpa did. So every time I got a black belt, dad would always say, I hate doing this. Well, why are you doing it, dad? Because you're negative. I got to teach you. This is falling. I hate when it falls. Guys, I don't know what to tell you. I'm trying to keep this level. And, and, and it was like, I heard two people now tell me about this beating from dad. So when I was getting my black belt spanking, because it wasn't a beating, it was on the butt. I always had my pants on. <laughs> but but it was it was like, somebody's telling me the truth on these stories. I guess grandpa did do that. So every time I was getting a black belt, dad would always, always, always say, man, I hate doing this. But you went negative, so I'm going to have to teach you a lesson. Okay, and I owe you, I owe it. He says, what I'm going to give you, I got it worse. And I never believed it because I was, I heard mom's story, but I didn't believe it until I got to eighth grade and I started something and I heard about it. So dad always did that. He didn't want to, but we were going negative. So he had, he had to set us up straight. That's all. That's all dad was doing. And, and that's all he knew, right? Because every generation kid, every, ge every generation gets smarter. And, and, you, and as you know, kids, you've got to be better off than your parents. And, and your, parents will, your parents will even say, yeah, we're better off than our parents. So it keeps getting better and better. See what I'm saying? Okay. So that's all I got to say about the black belt. I had to do that because it's important that you know that if your parents are spanking you, I don't know, think they do it anymore. But if they do, it's for your best interest. <laughs> Hopefully it is. And they're not just hitting you. You know, uh, that, that would be negative. But if you're getting a spanking for a reason that you've done something negative, well, there you go. That's why they're doing it, kids. It's not that they want to, but they have to. So you, so you grow up with the understanding that what you're doing is negative. You didn't know it was negative, or maybe you did, but you thought it was positive. You know, sort of like me with the fear thing. I thought it was positive. Little did I realize until that, come back, bro, come back. And then I never did it again. Okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now I'm running late again, so I've got to go. I'll try to be back tomorrow, and, and we'll work from there. So until then, be well.